That's why I asked you to repay the debt. My husband suddenly left me with a huge debt and disappeared. No matter how much I tried to contact him, he never responded. What am I supposed to do now? There's no way I can pay off such a large debt. Luckily, I had someone by my side who encouraged me when I felt lost. Mom, cheer up, said my lovely daughter. My name is Linda. I'm 37 years old, working part-time and being a housewife. My husband's name is Johnny, and we are a family of three. I met Johnny at a mixer I attended just to fill the numbers. I was nervous, but Johnny started talking to me and made the atmosphere lighter. We got along well and decided to exchange contact information. As we continued to communicate, special feelings grew between us. It didn't take long for us to start dating. Who would have thought I'd end up in a relationship with someone I met at a mixer? After our first date, I told my older sister Laura about Johnny. Laura laughed and said, Really? I never thought you'd choose a boyfriend from a mixer. I assumed you'd date someone from work or something. I've always been quiet and not good at socializing. Even as an adult, I rarely went to parties or gatherings. It's an unexpected twist, right? I went to the mixer as a favor to make up the numbers. When I showed Laura a photo from my date with Johnny, she said, he's surprisingly handsome. We then updated each other about our lives and decided to part ways for the day. Laura is still single and doesn't seem interested in getting married or having a boyfriend. She enjoys her single life, finding it more relaxed and comfortable. I understand that mindset, but my heart is set on a future with Johnny. If our relationship goes well, and we get married and have children, it would be wonderful. On my way home after talking with Laura, I couldn't stop smiling. A few years later, I married Johnny. I remember vividly when he proposed. I was so emotional and couldn't hold back my tears. We moved into a new apartment, marking the start of our married life. Living with Johnny every day felt surreal, almost like a dream since we had lived separately before marriage. Because of our different work hours, we rarely came home at the same time. But we always ate dinner together, slept under the same blanket, and cherished the moments we shared. On our days off, we would relax at home or go for drives, making the most of our time together. A few months later, we were blessed with a child, a tiny and adorable girl named Kelly. The joy of her birth is something I'll never forget. Our parents and relatives were also overjoyed and sent many gifts. Before giving birth to Kelly, I quit my job to dedicate myself to my family. Johnny always thought of us and helped with housework and childcare, even when he was tired. He would say, I'll take care of Kelly so you can rest. I truly married a wonderful person. Living with Johnny, who treasures us, has been heartwarming. However, a few years later, I deeply regretted marrying Johnny. Several years after Kelly's birth, Johnny suddenly quit his job. He explained that he had issues with a new boss, which affected his mental well-being, and he reached his breaking point. I understand why he left, but I was bothered that he didn't discuss it with me first. Of course, resigning is an option if a husband faces challenges at work, but our family relies on Johnny's salary. He should have talked to me before making such a big decision. That was so sudden. Have you already thought about your next job? I asked. Yeah, don't worry. I'll figure something out. Johnny replied vaguely, but his response didn't ease my worries. All I can do now is trust him. Fortunately, Johnny found a new job quickly, which was a relief. I also thought about working, but since Kelly is still young, I want to be there for her at home. Is everything okay at the new job? Have you settled in? I asked. Yeah, somehow, he replied. Did something happen? Are you not getting along with your boss or colleagues? I asked, worried. I told you I'm fine. Don't worry too much. Look, I'll take care of Kelly so you can take a bath. Really? Thank you. He seemed different from usual, but I felt that asking more might upset him. So, I handed Kelly to him and went to take a bath. A few days later, Johnny came home looking upset. As I tried to ask him what happened, 
memories of the past flashed through my mind. I remembered when he suddenly announced his resignation. Did he quit his job again so soon? Sadly, my suspicions were right. I quit my job, he said. Why? I just couldn't get along with the people there. I couldn't stand being directed by someone much younger than me. I just couldn't bear it anymore. I see, but we'll get through this. We'll find another job. I'll help in any way I can, I said, trying to stay positive. Suddenly, Johnny's expression changed, and he raised his voice. Hey, what's with that look? You don't like that I quit? You are able to eat because I work. You just stay at home, and you're acting all high and mighty. He threw his bag onto the living room table. What's gotten into you all of a sudden? Shut up, just be quiet, he shouted. Unable to contain his anger, Johnny grabbed a whiskey from the fridge and drank it in one gulp. I had never seen him this angry before. At that moment, I felt terrified. I had always been grateful to him and tried to be supportive. An extremely angry Johnny shouted at me for a while, then slumped down on the sofa, looking grumpy. I was so shocked that all I could do was accept his words. This incident created a rift in our relationship. Since then, Johnny has been in a cycle of finding and quitting jobs. We lived in uncertainty and had many anxious days. Johnny, can't you be a bit more serious about your job? I finally asked. At first, I tried to understand his feelings and said nothing, but given the circumstances, I couldn't stay silent any longer. I couldn't stay silent any longer. You're annoying. If you have complaints, then you work and earn money. You rely too much on me, Johnny snapped. But we have Kelly to consider, I replied. So what's your point? Johnny retorted. Lately, Johnny had been losing interest in Kelly and seemed to avoid her. When she was born, he was so caring and happy. Now, he felt like a completely different person. No matter how much I pleaded, Johnny showed no interest in working again. Eventually, I decided to leave Kelly with Laura and start working myself. I'm really sorry for having to leave her with you, I told Laura. It's okay, Kelly and I will wait together, Laura reassured me. Kelly had just started kindergarten, so I wasn't too worried about leaving her. I trusted Laura to take good care of her, and Kelly was very mature and calm for her age. She showed interest in newspapers, read them on her own, and could write long, complex sentences. She was quiet and composed, making friends easily in kindergarten. As a parent, it was heartwarming to see her so happy and well-adjusted. Feeling confident, I started looking for a job and found one quickly. I began working full-time, and the pay was better than I expected. Even if Johnny quit his job, our finances would be stable. The work environment was pleasant, and despite the busy days, I enjoyed my job. A few years after I started working, Johnny finally found a stable job. He seemed to find a workplace that satisfied him, and I felt a profound sense of relief. His demeanor brightened over time, and he started to act like the man I knew in the early days of our marriage. He became considerate of the challenges I faced juggling work and family, often asking, has it been tough? Aren't you tired? I was taken aback by this transformation, but it seemed job stability had given Johnny peace of mind. Kelly was growing up healthily, and Johnny started acting like a caring father again. Seeing Kelly play joyfully with Johnny always warmed my heart. Still, the thought of returning to the way things were before made me anxious about leaving my job. Therefore, I decided to keep working and ensure our family's future remained secure. I continue to rely on Laura for childcare. How's Kelly? Is she doing well? I asked. Don't worry. She's playing happily, Laura replied. If Kelly was doing well, I could be at ease. I planned to treat Laura to something she liked as a token of my appreciation. Several years passed, and Kelly was now in third grade. She went to school every day with great enthusiasm. Our family's bond was just like before, harmonious and loving. I wondered what had caused the rift between Johnny and me, because our home life felt so stable almost as if the past problems had been forgotten. 
Then one day, Johnny made a suggestion. Ever think about getting a new car? A new car? Yeah, our current car is good, but it's reaching the end of its life. It's becoming a hassle to maintain. The car we were using had been purchased quite a while ago, and over the years, issues had increased and repair costs were piling up. You might be right. Maybe we should consider a new car. Yes, I knew you'd agree. By the way, I've already got some catalogs ready. I didn't expect him to be this eager about replacing the car, but we started looking through the catalogs together. Kelly, come here. Which car do you want to ride in? Let's decide together, he called Kelly over, and the three of us enjoyed flipping through the car catalogs together. However, I couldn't have imagined that this day would mark the beginning of an unexpected turn of events. A few months later, the new car we chose was delivered. It was a brand new model costing over $255,000. The loan was under my name. Generally, people would expect Johnny's name on the loan, but considering his unstable work history, we were concerned about being rejected. I was determined to work even harder to pay off the loan. I was sure Johnny felt the same way. That's what I believed, but my hopes were shattered in an instant. Johnny stopped coming home. He disappeared along with the new car. Could it be that Johnny got involved in some kind of trouble? What should I do? At that moment, my cell phone rang. The call was from Johnny. Hello, Johnny. What are you doing? Where are you now? Out of concern, my voice raised unintentionally. Hey, calm down. But you disappeared all of a sudden, and the new car is gone. What happened? Did you get caught up in some trouble? I tried to express how worried I had been, but Johnny laughed at my concerns and said something unbelievable. Actually, I found a new lover. She's more important to me than you. What? What do you mean? Let me be clear. I've fallen in love with someone else. I've already taken care of the divorce papers. I'd appreciate it if you stopped getting involved. Wait, divorce? I can't believe this. I was shocked to hear about the divorce notice. I remembered a discussion we had during a big fight a while ago. Submitting the application to the court means that both parties agree to the divorce. I deeply regretted letting my emotions take control at that time. Oh, by the way, I have a debt. I'm counting on you to repay it. What? How much debt are we talking about? About $350,000, give or take. I'm leaving all the repayments to you. With those words, Johnny abruptly hung up the phone. I never thought something like this would happen to me. Were all his kind smiles in the past just lies? As these thoughts crossed my mind, I felt the strength drain from my body. Mom, what happened? Kelly rushed over, looking concerned as I slumped to the floor. It's okay, honey. Thank you. I tried to put on a brave face, but inside I was filled with anxiety. How will I manage our life now with such a massive debt looming over us? The thought of $350,000 made me feel suffocated. On top of that, there was still the car loan to think about. In a state of panic, I decided to check my bank balance. I searched the closet, drawers, kitchen, bedroom everywhere. My ATM card was nowhere to be found. Frantically, I launched my bank app on my smartphone. To my horror, the account balance had significantly decreased. Of course, I had no memory of withdrawing such an amount. Johnny was the only suspect. I tried to contact him, but there was no response. It's all over, I thought, feeling my mind go blank. I decided to focus on earning money. I kept this a secret from Laura to avoid unnecessary worry, and from young Kelly as well. A few weeks after Johnny disappeared, I lost consciousness at work. When I came to, I found myself lying in a hospital bed. Where am I? Linda, are you awake? Laura, with a shaken expression, entered the room with Kelly standing beside her. It seemed I had fainted due to extreme stress. I was told I needed to stay in the hospital for several days for more tests. Hospitalized? What should I do after you're discharged? Let's talk about Johnny. Kelly told me everything. Kelly told you, did you know? Actually, 
I overheard Dad's phone call. I was surprised to find out that Kelly knew the truth. When it was time for my discharge, I felt down, worrying that Laura might point out I shouldn't have let Kelly know. The next day, various tests were conducted. The results revealed that my poor health was due to cancer. Fortunately, it was still in the early stages, and there was hope for recovery through surgery. Although the surgery went well and I was discharged, returning to work immediately seemed impossible. I had no savings and medical bills were piling up. During these challenging times, Laura and Kelly became my pillars of support. When Kelly explained the situation with Johnny and my condition to Laura, she was even more furious than I had anticipated. Laura tried to locate Johnny to make him repay the debt and medical bills, but his whereabouts remained unknown. We don't have any leads on Johnny's current location. What do we do? Laura then had a suggestion. The car that's under your name, Johnny has it, right? How about we try to get it back? Is that really possible? I asked in surprise. Actually, I found out where Johnny is currently working. Surprisingly, he's working for a different company inside the building where I work. Though I usually work remotely, I occasionally visit the office and have seen him there. Knowing this, we can move forward with our plan. Then let's go to Johnny's place right away. I was eager to confront Johnny immediately. If we didn't take action soon, he might disappear again. However, Laura stopped me. Don't rush. We need a solid plan, not just a hasty approach. Kelly and I have come up with a good idea. That's right, Kelly said, smiling. Both of them exchanged smiles, and I couldn't grasp the full implications behind their demeanor. Kelly beamed and reassured me, don't worry, everything's set up. I wondered what kind of scheme they had hatched. They didn't provide the specifics, but everything became clear a month later. While at Laura's house, there was a sudden incoming call. Checking the caller ID, it was from Johnny. At first, I ignored the call, but it kept coming. Something must have happened. Gathering my courage, I answered. Johnny pleaded in a frantic voice. Hey, help me out, please. What? I'll explain everything later. Just get here now. I'm about to be arrested. Johnny shared his location and quickly ended the call. Having overheard the conversation, Laura and Kelly finally revealed the turn of events. Actually, we reported the car was stolen. The idea was Kelly's. Impressive, right? Kelly blushed and looked down. Filled with gratitude, I thanked them and hurried to where Johnny was waiting. The park he mentioned was surprisingly close to my home. There were police officers gathered around Johnny, interrogating him. We approached quickly. First, we explained the situation to the police officers, and they left. Then Johnny ushered us into his car and began explaining what happened. In the passenger seat sat a confident-looking woman, her legs crossed, staring at us coldly. Thanks for coming, but why did the police come to me? Johnny asked, confused. Despite being surrounded and questioned by the police, he hadn't understood why. I reported the car was stolen. After all, that car is mine, I said, shocked at his confusion. We're divorced, so we have no ties. Reporting it stolen was the natural thing to do. He probably never expected to be reported for car theft. Kelly continued the conversation with Johnny, who was visibly shaken. Dad, why did you leave us behind? Why won't you pay back the money yourself? Explain. Johnny let out a sigh, looking exasperated but remained silent. If you're just going to stay silent, I'll report it to the police. Using my name without permission is a crime. Hearing this, Johnny began to talk bit by bit. He mentioned his mistress, Julie. Apparently, she had recently joined the company where Johnny worked. They connected during a company welcome party, which developed into a romantic relationship. Shockingly, about five months ago, he found out she was pregnant. Looking at July's stomach, it was evident she was expecting. So, you chose her over us and left? I asked. That's a harsh way to put it, but yes, Johnny admitted. Laura suddenly interjected, but the fact remains, you left, right? 
Johnny seemed taken aback by her directness, but Laura continued questioning him. She began to lash out at Johnny, criticizing his past actions. She talked about his irresponsible behavior towards the family, constantly changing jobs, and his quick temper, which often led to him yelling in anger. Johnny, deep in thought or maybe just ignoring her, bowed his head and stayed silent. Julie, irritated, pressed him about the $350,000 debt, but he stayed quiet. Unable to hold back any longer, Julie revealed a shocking truth. He borrowed money in his wife's name to buy me a lot of luxury items. A debt of $350,000 for gifts for Julie? What on earth did he buy? It was hard to believe. What was even more curious was how easily Julie revealed the reason for Johnny's debt. If they were in cahoots, revealing this information would put them at a disadvantage. While I was thinking about this, Kelly asked Julie a question. Your belly is pretty big. Is it a baby? When are you due? In about five months, I guess. Giving birth in five months? That didn't make sense, considering she was supposedly impregnated five months ago. Shouldn't there be more time? Laura noticed this inconsistency and pressed Julie further. Is that baby really Johnny's? Isn't it odd for the baby to be due in five months? Whose child is it? Laura voiced her suspicions directly. Although surprised, Julie didn't seem intent on hiding anything. Actually, the child isn't Johnny's. I thought about keeping it a secret, but I figured it would be a hassle to get further involved with him, so I'll just spill the beans. Is that why you were honest about the debt too? Laura asked. Yeah, there's no point being with Johnny anymore after all, she said with a mocking expression. The atmosphere was heavy and tense. I wanted to get away from there right now. Meanwhile, Johnny stared at Jolie with an incredulous expression. Hey, what are you talking about? This is a joke, right? Why would it be a joke? I mean exactly what I said. The tension increased, making the atmosphere even more stifling. Amidst this, Laura took charge of the situation. Anyway, I'll call the police. Huh? What are you talking about? Johnny asked, panicked. I couldn't care less about you two, but remember, borrowing money under Linda's name is a crime. Plus, using the car without permission is also a crime, especially since Johnny and Linda are now complete strangers. Laura instructed me to contact the police. Johnny and Julie frantically tried to talk their way out of the situation. I ignored their pleas and made the call. After a while, I could hear sirens approaching. This should make them face the consequences. The issues regarding the debt and the car should be on their way to resolution. I felt a huge relief. Finally, things were sorted out. In the end, Johnny and Julie faced legal action. They didn't end up in prison, but they had to take on responsibilities like compensation payments, repaying the debt, and child support. Several times, they tried to reduce the payments through lawyers, but a secret recording that Kelly had made was used as evidence so their requests were denied. Kelly had made the recording because of a scene from a TV show she had watched with Laura. While I thought she was really quick-witted, I couldn't help but wonder what kind of shows Laura had shown Kelly. After all that, Kelly and I now live with Laura. Kelly didn't face any issues commuting to school since it was close to our previous home. The car was safely returned, and it seems Johnny is somehow managing the debt. If Johnny hadn't made those wrong decisions, he wouldn't have had to face such hardships. In this whole incident, the presence of Laura and Kelly was significant, and thanks to them, the situation is heading towards resolution. I'll work hard from now on, hoping for a peaceful life with the two of them.